If you're watching this video, I can pretty much guarantee you know what a terminal is. But when you type commands in the terminal, what's actually going on behind the scenes? This is what I'm going to address in this video. So first off, you have your shell. And a shell is a program that is run when your terminal is opened. And the shell could be anything. Heck, it could even be... Um, Oh, I don't know, something like ASCII Aquarium. It doesn't matter what your shell program is. It's just a program. But in the case of something like Bash, it's a program for executing more programs. So Bash is the shell that is open when I open my terminal. And um, when you type commands in Bash, Bash parses it with its own syntax. That's why... Um, well, most shells, if not all shells, share common syntax where it's like, you know, quotation marks to specify strings, uh, space to separate arguments and stuff. That's all pretty standard stuff. All the shells share that common behavior. And that is handled by the shell. So, for example, I have a program that... Uh, prints out all the arguments and other stuff passed to it. So uh, if I run, for example, tilde slash config, it will print out the full path to config because bash is parsing this and it's expanding the path. Now, interestingly, uh, there are actually some uh, paths handled by the kernels. So like, for example, dot slash config uh, will return the same thing because the kernel actually knows that by dot, I mean the current directory, which yes, paths are handled by the kernel um, when you like read or write a file or something like that. So, okay, um, so, all right, so bash, in my case, is parsing arguments, expanding them, sanitizing them, whatever. So like, for example, another thing I could do is I could, uh, I could, put in the output of a, another command. And as you can see, bash is parsing this. Uh, the command, uh, the, the program, the command itself does not parse this. Bash is parsing this and is putting the um, value in there. And okay, so now what actually is a command? So all a command is, is either a built-in command in your shell of choice, or it is a program on your computer that is in a variable called path, uh, or it is an alias in the case of something like a shell, a bash, for example. So built-ins and aliases are specific to your shell, and then commands in path are specific to um, are specific to the path. So like if you want to be able to just, if you create a script and you call it, um, and you call your script something like my dash script and you want to just run it without passing a full path to that script, you'd add it, you'd add the directory containing that script to your path variable. And then you could just type my dash script. So for example, if I do some, uh, magic here and I do echo path and I do TR uh, and I chain I replace the colons with uh, new lines you can see these are all the directories in my path all on their own lines so I have my rust programs my go programs for some reason I don't use go so I'm not sure why that's there um, I have my local bin I have my flat tools, I have my bash scripts, I have cargo bin two more times for some reason, I have user local s bin, user local bin, that makes sense, I have user bin, if this wasn't here, my system would basically not, well, it function, but if I wanted to type a command like, for example, the echo command, I'd have to do slash user slash bin slash echo, and that would be painful and scripts would just assume I have slash user slash bin in here, opt bin, and some LLVM stuff. So this is my path variable, and essentially, if a program is in any of these directories, it can be run with just the program name in my terminal. Now, 
running programs that are not in this, um, you just pass in the path to that program. And you probably already know this. This is why, for example, if I'm in this directory, uh, if I want to run this uh, update script, for example, I would just do dot slash update because I'm doing local directory slash update. And that's how that works. So that's why if you've ever seen like running local scripts, that's why there's a dot slash at the beginning because it actually means current directory slash and then the script name. Now arguments. How do programs, these commands handle arguments? So arguments are passed to a program as essentially a giant array, sometimes giant, depends how many arguments you pass. Um, they're passed as a, an array to the program. So for example, if I um, go into Rust, for example, and I do, I edit my testing, CD testing, um, if I delete all this, I can get all my program arguments with um, this. I can do std env args collect. This is just Rust specific stuff. Um, for example, in C, you would do um, in C set language C or CPP. Uh, you would do int main and then you'd have uh, int arg c, so the arg count, and then you'd have a pointer to um, essentially pointers, basically a pointer to an array of um, arguments, arg v, and this is how you'd get arguments in your C or C++ programs. And I know there's different ways to write this and stuff, but yeah. Um, so this is how I'm getting arguments in Rust, and what I can do is just print them all out. Args. So now if I run this, oh, and I need to add the type. So now if I run this, you'll notice that it's printing out the path of the program. Now this is not, it's not enforced by the kernel, but um, the convention is to always have the first argument passed to a program be the path to the actual program. This is not enforced. This is just a standard and it's, you can just assume it's enforced because the standard is so well respected. Um, anything that doesn't respect the standards is basically automatically considered broken or a piece of shit. So yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's how you pass arguments uh, to a program and that's how a program receives arguments. And so I can also do, I can do cargo run and uh, now I'm going to type arguments passed to my actual program. So like ABC, uh, you see ABC. And fun side effect of this is um, e flags are not actually parsed. Uh, the program itself is actually responsible for parsing flags and stuff. And this is why, like, if you ever use something like GCC and you're compiling C code uh, and you do dash pedantic and you're like, why isn't this a double dash? Well, that's why is because all programs have their own parsing standard. And there is, you know, the generally respected standard is that double dashes mean a word flag and single dashes mean a character flag. Uh, that's the general standard, but it's not enforced by anything. That's just programs agreeing to do it that way. And yeah, it, it gets kind of annoying. And that's why things like clap exist in Rust, is to make this a lot easier. Um, so yeah, that's how flags are passed to programs. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. All right, that's it. I will see you guys next time. Bye bye